Hi there, dear friends. I wanted to share a little something with anybody. I don't know who might hear it and think about it and might help them if you ain't never thought about it. I'm getting ready. I'll show you to work on uh, some banana bread for my good friend. Her birthday's tomorrow. Let's see if you can see. Yeah, I got my things set out here. Over here, I'm still working on uh, chili bean stuff. But you see how black those bananas are getting? That's good and ripe. And maybe even a little blacker makes the best banana bread. Don't use yellow, green bananas. Uh, but anyway. Okay, what I was going to share about. Um, this came up in a conversation in the past couple of days with somebody. And... Uh, I went back and watched an old video I had recorded way back when I first started my channel. And it was about reading your Bible. And I'm going to kind of repeat it, what I said there. Because it's so far back in my videos, nobody probably could find it. But there's been a few years since that time that I recorded that. And... I'm even more confident of it now. But what it was, is back a few years ago, when I was first starting to, I wanted my relationship with the Lord to grow. I wanted to get to know Him more and more. You know, trying to draw close to Him. What does that mean? How do you do that? All that. Well, at that time, and I'm just being real honest with you, okay? <laughs> my dogs are playing. Don't look at my dirty floor, but say hey, say hey. <laughs> they are the sweetest dogs. But anyway, um, yeah, I got you riled up now. Okay, be still, be still, be still. Yes. Uh, but anyways, um, back then, and I and I have to be honest, you know, that is to be honest, not be honest with yourself. You know, be honest with the Lord, and you can find yourself being more more honest and open with people, too. But this is honestly how I felt. I'm not proud of it, but maybe somebody else might see it this way. And maybe they might feel a little embarrassed or ashamed to talk about it. But I'm going to go ahead and share and tell you. So at that time when I was just really felt, I don't know, just something came alive in me to start calling out to the Lord and <clears throat> I needed help, you know. Well, at that time, reading my Bible, like, this is what was on me. It felt like a chore. Somebody might say, oh, that's terrible. Well, it might be terrible, but that's the way it was. It felt like a duty I needed to carry out, and I just didn't have the, like, I, I disciplined myself. I tried to discipline myself and make myself do it, right? You know, tried to stick to a schedule. But in trying to discipline myself, it felt like a chore. It felt burdensome, heavy, you know? Because it wasn't necessarily something I had the desire to do or the want to. But it's something I felt like I should do. And of course, everybody else would be telling me, you need to do this. So I just talked to the Lord about it. I was honest with him about it. I said, Lord, I, I know I'm supposed to read this. You know, I want to learn more about you. I want to understand your ways. I want to, all these things, right? But I just don't want to. And to another thing, at that time, if I, you know, trying to discipline myself to do it, if I missed a day of reading my Bible, I feel guilty. I feel guilty. And I didn't want to feel guilty, you know? And the Lord don't want us to feel guilty, neither. You can look up scriptures about guilt in the Bible. It's terrible. 
he's so good, ain't he, to not want us to have to go through guilt and stuff. But anyway, so I wish I had wrote down the scripture. Seems like I came across a scripture. Seems like it was in Psalms, and it seems like it was at David that said it. And you could Google it and see if you can find it. But it was something to the nature of, I saw David asking the Lord to give him a hunger and a thirst for righteousness, to give him a hunger and a thirst and a desire for his word. And I saw that, and I was like, hmm. I was like, Lord, will you give me a hunger and a thirst for your word? Will you give me a desire that I don't have right now? But would you give me the gift of it? Would you give me the desire that I would really genuinely want to study, want to read, you know, what's been written from generations gone by for our teaching and our training and stuff, leading us into a deeper relationship with the Lord. And nothing happened overnight, okay? That's the thing. Um, but a little at a time, I can tell you what's the truth. I started wanting to open that Bible and start reading it. Truly. I wanted to. It was like I craved it. Now, then when I started getting into it, you know, all right, too. The, that desire I had, it also, somehow the Lord took away my guilt that if I went a day or two or three and didn't read that Bible, I didn't feel guilty. You know why? Because I might read it today on Sunday, read some scriptures, read a story, whatever. That's getting in my mind. So tomorrow, I've got the, I can st I think about it. I might think about it for two or three days or a week. You know? Chew on it. Ponder it in my heart. Meditate on it. You know? And, but here's the thing. Here's too what's something that happened. All my life, even prior to really wanting to grow closer with the Lord, I'd been in and out of church, raised up in it, taught a lot by other people, read a lot of devotions, even read the Bible. But what I found was I had a memorization of Scripture. A lot of the Scriptures that are so well known, I knew those. But here's the thing. I didn't know them for real in my heart in my life. I was a hearer of that word, but I did not yet know how to do that word. Like I said, I had a memorization. I could quote it. But as far as that word getting into my heart and my mind and then my heart, you know, David said, I hide your word in my heart that I won't sin against you. See, I wasn't yet to the point where I knew how to read the scripture, ponder it, let it sink deep in me, think about it, keep it in my mind, talk to the Lord about it. What does this mean, Lord? And then actually be able to go and practice it, apply it to my regular life in regular situations. You know, like I'd always read, pray for your enemies. But I had never knew how that come to life in me. And I could apply it to my situations. So when I had somebody come against me that was mean or rude to me, humiliate me in front of other people, I've had that. That right there was an opportunity for me to practice those words that I had in my mind so that they come to life in me. I could do it. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? I hope I'm explaining it good. You know? Because I, I believe this. You could read that scripture about praying for your enemies. 
and really think about it and really ask the Lord, show me more about this. How does this come to be real in my regular life? How do I apply? How do I practice that? And y'all, you could walk that thing out, practice that, think about it. The Lord will give you even more understanding on that one little scripture. And you will have more wisdom than a man over here that could quote you the whole Bible, yet he does not practice any of it. You know, matter of fact, I'm thinking of a scripture where Jesus told the people, he said, look, listen to what the Pharisees are teaching you, because they were teaching the law, they were teaching the scriptures. He said, listen to what they say, but don't do as they do, because they did not do what they heard. They want to do her. You know? They took pride in that they knew a lot of scripture. They could quote a lot of scripture. But that did not come to fruition in their life to where it actually changed them. You know? Does that make sense? So we don't want to just have some big pile of knowledge up here about the Bible, about the scriptures. Because we're told knowledge will puff you up, right? But we want rather a wealth, a storehouse of the Lord's teachings, His words, His directions, His ways. We want that to come in and come to life in us. And I'm going to finish with this. This is something I also did in case anybody wants to think about it. And y'all, I'm confident that it happened for me. The Lord does not show favoritism. He is not partial from one to the other like people are. He regards the rich and the poor. He causes it to rain on the just and the unjust. He is truly good. He is truly able to render a righteous and sound decision every time because he's not partial. He is guided by his nature, his and who he is, his love. And uh, anyways, so what I do is, if I read me a scripture, just open it up. Read. Something might grab your attention. Know that the Lord wants to teach you more about that. If something stands out to you, kind of nudges at your heart, he wants to teach you more about it. And what I would do is um, I'd say, Lord, all right, I've read this scripture. Now, will you give me an example in today or tomorrow in my everyday life? You know, I'm going about my work. I'm going about my chores. I'm whatever's going on. Will you give me a real life example of how to use this scripture, how to apply it? what it means, what it looks like. Make it come to life for me. That it's just not words on a page, but help me to see the power thereof and the life therein and all this kind of stuff. You know? And he will. He will He will give you a real life situation that will stop you dead in your tracks, get your attention, and you'll go, Wow! That's what that scripture means. Or that's what it looks like. You know? Or just whatever. So I hope anybody, if you don't do that, you can do it. But whatever it is. You know? In this case, we're talking about reading the Bible. And whatever it is, just be honest, if you can, with the Lord. About what you think, how you feel, what you're afraid of what you desire, what you don't understand. And as you're reading in the scriptures, I take every scripture to him. Lord, what does this mean? Explain this to me, Lord. He's got more to say. He does. So I only share that hope and maybe it might make sense and it might could help somebody, you know. This is truly real, y'all. He is truly real. It's just not a good idea. It's just not the right thing to do and say. 
this about the Lord. This is truly real. You can have a living, breathing relationship with the creator of heaven and earth. With the lover of your soul. You can get to know him more than what you already do. I know I haven't begun to scratch the surface of finding out who he is, all his good ways. And anyway, that's just amazing. So I love you guys. I hope you have a good day. Talk to you soon.